Hello everyone, welcome to episode 3 of this Chess Nerd Rapid tournament on chess.com. We are in round 3. We won the first game, drew the second game. If you haven't seen those videos, check out the playlist below and just go to the previous videos. Or go on my channel and go to my latest videos and it'll be the, one, be the ones before this one. Sorry, I am a little bit on edge right now. My tone might seem a bit different than usual but i'm in the zone we're going for a tartakawa if my opponent allows it he does and this is the same line that we played in the first game and knight f3 is a mistake i have played a classical game in this exact line uh, a few videos ago the i think it was the video before the first episode of this tournament we played this exact line. Bishop e3 we didn't play. But this is just a bit of an issue for white, basically. I'm going to drop back. My opponent could go like g4 and then maybe castle queenside. That is playable. He goes kingside, though. Surprising. Now, what are we going to do? Let's start with rookie 8 because that's just a normal move in this position. This knight is going to come to d7. Now, my queen might come to c6. It might not. Bishop e2, that's a concession. You've come to d3 to go back. That's not ideal for white. So, what are we going to do? I could rotate my knight around to e6. I could rotate my knight into d5. Might be 6, c4, though. We could go queen... Sorry, bishop c7 to set up queen d6. Well, that could be met with g4, bishop g6, and c5. Which wouldn't be ideal. Um, c5 is an idea in these lines, but I don't think right here. f5 is also sometimes an idea, but again, I don't think here. Um, we could go queen c7. Wouldn't be a bad move. But I just feel like it doesn't accomplish that much. I'm going to go knight f8. And maybe I go bishop c7 and queen to d6. Obviously threatening bishop f3 followed by queen h2. And maybe inducing the move g4. Except we wouldn't be prone to c4, c5, forking queen and the knight because our knight is on f8 so let's drop the bishop to c7 if c5 is played stopping queen to d6 which he does i don't think that's a good idea for white i think that's very weakening because we control the d5 square which means this ladies and gentlemen is a backwards pawn but watch out for those they can be very weak we're going to try and prove that let's go knight e6 Putting pressure on the pawn. Now, the most important thing is to control the square in front. So we also have to make sure we do that. It's difficult for white to really control that square. But something like bishop to c4 would just mean the knight is pinned to the queen. So the queen isn't really controlling the square. Because if she does, the knight falls and then the structure gets ruined. So it's not simple. Not simple. And because of this knight's... Um, well, what's the word? geometric position in comparison to the d5 square with it being like three diagonals away basically well two diagonals away but you you get what i mean this geometric pattern means it's very difficult for the knight to get to its desired square it has to take four moves to get there which means it needs to, to take three moves to control the square which is a lot of time to invest right something worth knowing well always knowing really it's a pattern you can just instantly click and know. Uh, knights don't get to these squares easily. Like squares that are in relation to the knight like that. You get what I'm saying. I think this is quite an ideal Karo Khan Tartakawa. Because we control the F4 square very nicely. Which is a big part of this opening. <clears throat> okay, queen d3, that's fine. I think we're going to respond with queen d5. I mean, pressure on the knight, but really, we're preparing rook d8. 
to put more pressure on d4 and we have more of a grip over d5 because we have a piece there. We could consider bishop to g6 attacking the queen, but we don't have to. We don't have to. We could go knight to f4 and do this, which does look like a good idea, to be fair, because that is a very strong bishop. And my opponent has a lot of potentially vulnerable pawns on dark squares. So that's very tempting. We also have this idea of um, trying to expose the queen <clears throat> on d3 by sacking the knight. Currently, it doesn't work because this bishop is helping to defend. It's worth noting, we can't do this to try and draw the bishop away because that attacks the queen. We could be really cheeky and play queen d7 to try and bait it, but that's a waste of a move if my opponent sees it. So... I'm going to go rook d7. Try and play rook e to d8. And then this would be a threat. Okay, my opponent's going to triple up as well. Mm. What about knight f4 now? How about it? If my opponent doesn't take, it's not good. Not good for him. So I think he has to take rook c2. We could go take, take, take. Take, 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 take. And we'll be up a pawn in an opposite colored bishop endgame. He does have some pawns on dark squares. But it would be a difficult conversion. So we could consider this. But if my because obviously if takes takes that's good for us, but my opponent could just not react. He could just do nothing. F five is worth considering because that threatens f four, which traps the bishop. However, it does give away the five square. But take if take. take that looks decent actually i'm gonna go f5 that looks like the right idea to me and again i know f5 is a very common idea in this opening just executed at the correct time sorry my throat is a bit weird today um i've got like a bit of a cold but not like totally it's more of just like a weird throat which is kind of annoying, but I feel fine. I feel fine. I can still work out and, you know, do my jobs and whatever with no problem. It's just annoying. I was in um, a lecture at university earlier. And I was just sniffing all the time and I felt really bad because I was like, uh, you know, it's just kind of off-putting for people, isn't it? So I was trying not to. But this is just good. And like I said, way back when, on move 14, this is just a weakness. Well, that's not a weakness, but that is a weakness. And the reason is, you have to keep this pawn on c4, really, because it controls d5, which means that this pawn has the ability to move to d5 better. What's happened is, he's moved it to c5, just meant that over time i've just put a piece there so this pawn can never ever move and it's got no pawns behind it that can protect it so i just put all of the pressure on the pawn and just built my pieces around attacking that pawn and it's a problem it's a big problem for white <clears throat> if knight e5 i don't think this works because here, here, here. And I'm just losing material. Yeah, it doesn't work. Can I do it any other way? 
well. I could go like rook e7, but that feels like a sad move. So yeah, he does go for it. I think I have to take like this. And if he takes like this, yeah, no, he does that as expected. Um. Oh, actually, I can just go f4. <clears throat> I can just go f4 because you can't take because there's a pin f4 bishop f3 bishop 8 sorry queen a2 b4 I think my queen's trapped there actually that's crazy my queen can get trapped here I could just go knight c5 but that feels risky Feels risky. Could go again, bishop d4 as I initially planned. Which would be a fine move. Ah, I'm mad that this works. It's so random. I think or I could take with a knight actually. If I take with a knight, then this doesn't happen. Um, you take with a knight. I'm gonna do it. I'm honestly not 100% sure if this is the best course of action. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm tying myself up in knots potentially, but I don't think so. Queen takes, I think, is wrong. I think I have to take with the bishop. And to be fair, we do have opposite colored bishops. But I think it's okay. I think it's okay. I think we're threatening this as well. Yeah, we are. We are threatening bishop f2. So that's good. Because we're threatening bishop c5 as well. So, worst case scenario, I think we get to an... Worst case scenario, I think we get to an opposite colored bishop endgame where we're up two pawns. Which is winnable. Maybe. We do have double pawns on the f fire, which might affect our chances. But we can try and keep more pieces than just bishops on the board to increase winning chances. Again, that's the worst case scenario. Because it's not obvious how white deals with this position. And if I am going to be up two pawns in an endgame, I'd much rather like win the B2 pawn, for example, because the A pawn will be weak, the C pawn will be stuck on a dark square. So that would be far more winnable because the C pawn is going to be potentially easy to take. And then be up three pawns, which should be winning. Whereas if I win the C pawn and these pawns stay intact, they're harder to win because they're together. So it's less likely that I can win a third pawn. My opponent's taking some time here. I think we've handled this position beautifully. And I, I have fallen back in love with the Tartakawa variation of the Karo Khan. I really have. I stopped playing it for a bit because I was struggling um, to win when my opponent's castled queenside. Or well, I was struggling not to lose when my opponent's castled queenside. And a lot of people still do it. And to be fair, I do need to figure out what I'm supposed to do against it. But... But it's serving me very well, both online and in person at the moment. So let's not change something that's not broke. <coughs> yeah, sorry, my cough is being annoying. I hope that's not too bad on your guys' ears. But we're playing good chess. We're playing good chess. That's what's important. And he's down to two minutes. Remember, there's zero increment in this format. So this would be a very nice win if we can get this over the line. 
be a very nice win. Put us on two and a half out of three. That doesn't work. Here, here, here. I, I have a rook defending the square. And the rook's hanging anyway. I think he's miscalculated this. Or he just completely missed it. Which he might have done. But this is a, this is a complete win now. I mean, I'm up in exchange and two pawns. My pawn structure is beautiful. I can meet something like rook e7 with rook d7 if I want to be ultra solid. This bishop doesn't even have much to look at. Because after g6, yes, I will have a lot of horns on light squares. But they're not vulnerable. They're just going to restrict his bishop's movement and scope. <coughs> Big difference between like pawns on light squares like this against my opponent's bishop and pawns on dark squares like this against my, light, against my dark square bishop when I had one. Yeah, let's just drop back, offer him a rook trade. I mean, if he trades with me, then he just accepts that it's game over. <clears throat> Although, I did just allow this. But if he does that, king f8, and he has to trade with me. And then he can retreat his bishop, but it's game over. Because I get rook e2, sorry, rook d2. Anyway. <clears throat> it would have been cooler if I'd have actually planned that. Honestly, I didn't. But at the end of the day, the position is so good and so winning that it doesn't really matter. And my opponent's clock is ticking down. Remember, there is no increment. My voice is dying. I'm, I'm trying my best for you guys here, honestly. I'm trying my best. I don't want to have to step out of this tournament early if I can help it. Yeah, he goes for this, but this, if anything, makes my job easier. Guys, give this check. Take this. Um, no, you actually can't have this pawn now. You can't have this pawn either, mate. No. Nope. No pawns for you. <clears throat> He's going to go here. I'm going to go after this. And defend. Let's push. Let's take. Just why not? Let's go to E2. Fork. <clears throat> and my opponent times out anyway. Oh, my, um, my opponent just said uh, in the... And it wasn't my opponent. It was Thor Glizzard. Thor Glizzard. He goes ace, chess centurion in a chess nerd tournament. Hell yeah. We've, I mean, we've got to try and take um, my man Zach down if we can. I mean, he's currently on three out of three. But damn, we get some recognition. That's kind of crazy. I don't think people really knew who I was like that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, will this be on YT? Absolutely, dog. Um, and dog lizard, you're watching this. Thank you for recognizing, bro. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just typing to him real quick. Because I'm giving my man a shout out. Um, yeah, let's do a quick little analysis on this game. 91.2% accuracy for me. 84.1% for my opponent. This was definitely one of my better games so far. And yeah, F5. <clears throat> very nice move. I'm happy I found that. Knight takes, was that the best? No, Bishop takes was better. But it's probably interchangeable to an extent. Knight takes, takes, takes. Rookie one just blunders this. I wonder what his best idea was. Queen C2. And then... Do something like this. And I guess white actually does save him 
itself both pawns. Now the computer prefers this. Interesting though, I mean, it was just a solid Karo Khan game really. I would do more of an analysis, but honestly, like, I just feel rough. Um, I'm going to finish out this tournament because I'm dedicated to the cause. But yeah, we're on two and a half out of three. We've got three more games to go. Let's see if we can make the first place spot. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in this game in tomorrow's video.